What's going on, world? It's your man Pat Caesar, Caesar LLC, mobile mechanic and roadside services. Sorry for the wind, just in case you guys are hearing that in the background. I'm at my dad's 2012 Challenger right now, and you see this thermostat. We're gonna go to 180 degrees. I don't think you can see that. But either way, let me show you guys how to do this real quick, right after the intro. Promise that you'll catch me. So first we're gonna go ahead and start off uh, by jacking this thing up. We're gonna get under the car and my dad provided this beautiful premium mag pad. Uh, I will leave a link somewhere in the video. I will find this. Um, but you don't wanna have an issue like that Civic I told you guys about in one of the last videos at the house where some a-hole decided to jack the car up improperly. Come on. There we go. Okay. That way, you ain't got to worry about breaking anything whenever it goes up. All right. So, other things that we're going to need we got a plastic bag here, and we have a towel and extra rag and some towels. We're going to show you what we're going to do. So, the first thing, I right, put this how you want to put this down. Oh, okay. Okay. There we go. Thank you gonna put this because we want to protect the alternator um now you could drop the pan on here and then make sure the vehicle's cold so you could drop the pan and then uh drain it out from the bottom of the radiator um it's ideal but it isn't going to get that much fluid down so we are not going to go through that extra step but you also want to protect the belts so make sure when you put this in any place that has anything electric or rubber you want to be protected okay there we are whole thing's flush bungee cord definitely need a bungee cord because what we're going to do is essentially do here wrap this around here so i can pull this up as i pull these last two bolts out so it doesn't let any more fluid come down Keep your radiator cap on because if you let it out, it's gonna gravity feed and push more fluid out. So you would think that it'd be pressurized like this, but it's actually not. So I believe this is a 13 millimeter. Let us go get the, oh, and also you wanna get one of these. You wanna put this at the bottom of the car, even though it does have a skid plate block plan. And you'll see where it comes out. Couple things here. I got a 12 inch extension. Dodge manufactured antifreeze. And as you can see, it actually smells sweet too. Most antifreeze does though. I thought it didn't help too much of that. Alright, so going. We're gonna release this top bolt first. Some did get past and hitting that skid plate, so but it sounds like it's done now, so that's good. We just go down to the bottom, okay? Perfect, perfect. Making sure it's catching that little bit that we are missing. All right, couple turns, couple turns. Now you can see this beautiful oil catch can. Uh, in the video here, we need to make a video about that because I got another. I got a catch can I need to put on my truck. Um, there's plenty of information on the internet about it though. We'll make a video just so people can see it actually in action because it did take quite a bit um, or catch quite a bit of oil for the little bit of time it has been in there. So make sure these belt or bolts are put to the side. We got our bungee cord here which actually we don't need because it is not pressurized. So what you wanna do whenever you're taking this out, verify exactly where, where's the new thermostat? We got a Murray 
uh, part number 41680. Thank you, that's good. Cause I'm gonna move it anywhere. All right, so this is our new thermostat like I got, showed you guys. What you wanna do is look for that we pull position here because that's gonna dictate where, where the air is going once it gets bled out. So on the factory one, you can see it's a little bit different, but it's kind of, it, it's still the same. Well, you want, don't worry about this. You worry about where that hole is at. That is what you're gonna put your focus on. That, so right now, this one is facing at the six o'clock position. We wanna go exactly to that six o'clock position. Once we take this out, flathead, flathead. J hook. Gently pry it out. Shouldn't take that much effort, but it's been in there for a while. Make sure you're catching as much of this as you can and look for that six o'clock position. Alright, now typically you would want to close that beforehand, but and clean it. Now, I'm I'm a big fan of using um, not JV Weld, but um, silicone RVT. But this is absolutely not necessary for this application. I'm surprised. It's usually, usually I do it anyway, to be honest with you. But this don't need it because that gasket sets in there good. But you do want to have this not leaking as much as it is. But it's okay. It's because I didn't let all the fluid out. Once the bolts have started and you verify that there's no more coming out of here, simply tighten it back up. So I said y'all should 13 millimeter six point, but don't go all the way down. I'm gonna show y'all why. So used to using the air ratchet that it gets so done that using a regular ratchet these days. I try not to beat up the fuse panel box as well. And this is aluminum housing, so you don't want to use any power tools on here anyway. Okay, so you want to get it snug down. And then verify it is exactly over that rat that that thermostat gasket. You don't want it to bend or crinkle or any of that stuff. So once it's in position, you hold it. Now, probably wonder how do you know it's in the position? Well, it'll sit down and set it sit it seat itself over it you'll be able to feel if there's a loop or, or or if it's bunched up in one area or another so if you see right here so it is very thin you can see okay good right here see how it's hitting against the metal and then here it is not as much so we're going to tighten that side and verify that it's on there because the last thing you want is to worry about any leaks so Okay, so we're gonna move this all out. Best part, we 
crank it back up, fill the fluids back up, and check for any leaks. If you do see any excess of water, like this little bit here, it's not gonna help curtain anything from the top of the belt, but you still wanna wipe it off. Okay. Wipe off everything here. Be assured that we don't have any problems. don't have the actual torque specifications but hand tight is usually enough I'm not the biggest guy but it don't take all that much um, we really didn't lose very much coolant as you can see in there there's not very much loot loss at all um, let me check my cat well we are about what's that like a quarter of a quart roughly a quarter of a quart and since this basin is clean gonna throw this back in there it's not gonna hurt anything uh, there's probably a little bit of residue in there but we're not gonna worry about it but just in case have you a couple of those gallons readily available so if you did need to put any more in and you didn't want to reuse the old stuff you would be fine from there so uh, one more rag here and then um clean up move this stuff out the way and we're gonna crank it up look at fuel pressure and I'll show you guys how to bleed the system thermostat we went down to a 180 degree so that thermostat is going to 
open significantly earlier. I mean, we're over, we're at 23 degrees earlier. Uh, keeping the e e engine cool faster. That's what you want, especially here in Florida. Some people just run without a thermostat. I do not recommend it. I've been there, done that, and it can cause trouble if anything ever goes wrong. So believe that. Uh, otherwise than that, put your cap back on, drop the car back down, keep an eye on your temperature because now you're all ready to set and go. So if you do want to go down to a smaller thermostat or a smaller opening, I don't know where I'll put that box, but oh. The part number for this is, this is a Murray, and it is 41680. I will try to find this and put a link down below. Make sure you get a new seal with it. Don't just actually get the thermostat by itself, although the other one will probably be fine. That's my phone ringing. It's probably my wife or motor club. Until next time, mi gente, mi promundo beneficio. Siempre. Peace.